All right, y'all, it is March 13th, I believe, yeah, March 13th, and just want to give you an update. This video is diving into uh, field turkey strategies, scenarios, kind of how I go about it. Uh, I've gotten some questions on that, and so <clears throat> it's going to be more of uh, talking about an old school approach. I'll have another video and several videos out on different other scenarios, uh, one regarding kind of how to bow hunt turkeys and with the decoy in the fields and stuff like that. Uh, but wanted to give you an update. Um, tomorrow, well, let me go back. This video, that's what that's what it's about. So also uh, did a little bit of uh, scouting on some Georgia Public, several different WMAs, uh, and then also some private and basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to just find as many different turkeys as I can. That way I've got plenty of turkeys to kind of check on. Um, tomorrow is Georgia Youth Opener, so I will be taking some kids out. We'll have that on the channel this coming week. And also a bow setup video showing y'all how I set up my turkey bow. So, without further ado, if you enjoy the content, uh, hit the bell icon after you subscribed and you'll be able to follow along with this 2020 spring journal turkey journal whatever I call it um, not gonna be able to hunt every day not gonna be able to hunt as many days as I'd like to not gonna probably be gonna be able to do as many states as I would like to but we're gonna roll with the punches and see what we can get mustered up here and uh, thanks for watching God bless All right, guys, I had, I had to stop real quick on my way here. Are you living if you haven't had friendly guest breakfast? I mean, come on, people. These non-middle Georgians are just, y'all are missing out. That's what you're doing. You're just missing out. You gotta go get you some of that friendly guest. Hey, y'all drop a comment here if you can still see me. Where do y'all, uh, y'all have a little gas station around where y'all hunt at that you uh, always stop at, get your, uh, get your breakfast energy. Oh, this stuff right here, you wouldn't believe it. It has eggs, grits, because what could be better than grits? Uh, sausage and bacon. Little, little goulash there for your for your morning. Might need me some toilet paper. Alright. I'm at my first spot and I'm down in this swamp. I'm gonna hook to it one time, see if there's anything in this one that I'm gonna keep going down, finding the new birds. You could hear that four or five birds deep way back in there all right guys well uh i found some strut sign on this opening down here the other day yeah, he cro he crossed it, and uh, kind of the strategy or the goal for today was to obviously listen and keep tabs on turkeys. But one thing I wanted to do is observe this opening from a long ways off because I found that strut sign. I wanted to see what time that gobbler came out, uh, and I was thinking it might have been later in the day, but he just showed up. What was it, Alex? Eight o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock. So that's what I needed to know. So that's just kind of the process. Um, it starts with, you, know, you look at 
a bunch of different areas and then you try to dissect each one and uh it really boils down to putting boots on the ground but that's good to find one there so i'm gonna get in this truck and um go hit some other spots we'll see if we can identify and show y'all some other turkey sign all right guys i am all the way down i was way down this way and i could see right here um i was probably about a thousand yards away and this is where the scobbler come across here i'm gonna show you his tracks now that's his track from this morning right there and what i like to do is i'll put my middle knuckle in there and if it's close to this the length of my middle finger there that's a good indicator of a gobbler now if you'll notice this middle toe is definitely a lot longer than these side toes a hen's going to be close to the same length gobbler's going to be longer like i say about the from my middle knuckle all the way to the end that's about a gobbler and uh the de the way to tell the difference typically in a jake and a mature gobbler is the width the fatness of that toe so this one's pretty fat all right so i'm going up here to check this food plot up on this hill and i know i said this is a flat land setup strategies but this area is pretty flat it's relatively flat we'll look at some flatter stuff but if you see this little hill up here now i could see this field from way back up there up on the hill but the chances of me being seen are a lot higher doing that so this type of stuff how i play it out is i'm gonna stay just below where any turkey out there in that field up over that can't see me i'm gonna put trees in between where i want to pop up at and i'm just gonna take my time and a lot of times i might crawl four or five yards low and get to the tree i want to be observing that field at real slowly and when i pop up i'll be able to look and see that whole thing so keep that in mind when you're moving on turkeys uh, that kind of just plays into woodsmanship if you can like i say again if you can couple realism in your calling knowing what to say when to say it how to say it with woodsmanship uh you're just gonna put more turkeys on your strap so right here i'm crouched down some but you see that you can see this little blow down you got a tree right here that i'm pointing to about right there get one there one there and one there i like that tree about right there it slopes off like this so i'm gonna go over here get real low then i'm gonna get real low right here i'm gonna crawl and i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure that i'm low enough to where i can't see that field yet i'm just gonna get a little bit closer Okay, so from right here, from right here, I still can't see the field. Now I got this tree in my way. So from right here, I can slowly peek up. And look out there. I don't see anything. That's just kind of how I move on turkeys like that, but I'm going to go out here and check this food plot and see if I see any tracks. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go check a little bit of different stuff. We're going to dive into a little bit of a field, field turkey strategy type, more of that type stuff. Uh, just going to kind of go over it as it comes to mind. About to go over to a lot of spots that are mainly ag. Most of it's flat. Some of it is um, has some slight topography. All right, well, we're not in a deer stand. But one thing I like to do, speaking of field turkey strategies, 
So when, whenever I'm moving, I thought it was a turkey. Whenever I'm moving and navigating land, using woodsmanship, meaning I'm keeping structure in between me and where I think turkeys are or where I know turkeys are. Binoculars, climbing trees, getting glass on fields, trying to observe and find a turkey. In a hunting situation, this is a good example of a way that you can ensure that you don't get busted and turkeys don't see you. Um, it's just one of many ways to do it but it's it's definitely a lot better than crawling and doing all this stuff and trying to get to a certain spot where you can see up over instead just climb a tree if you can i'm gonna get down from here and we're gonna talk about a hunt that i had with my dad in this particular area uh where it was i want to say it was a little bit greener than it is now it's, it's early march now I want to say this was like first or second week of season. I think we had an early spring day then at that time of year. But I'm going to get down and go show you kind of how that hunt played out and how I approached it. All right, guys. I don't know if y'all can hear uh, this or not, but I'm going to do my best. So there's actually two different scenarios regarding flatland field turkeys and how you can tip the odds in your favor in two things that I did on two different hunts. So on this particular hunt, all this structure right here, if you see, I kept that structure in between me and where the turkeys were. I knew there wasn't really enough to be able to shoot that field uh, and to be able to get the turkeys to come on in with, with the hunter getting a good shot. So what I did was all this right here was a lot greener and thicker. So that was structure I put in between me, us, me, the caller, the hunter, in between us and the turkey so there's a slight topography change out there in that field about a hundred it's about a hundred yards or so all right so when they came over that rise in the field very slight that turkey knows exactly where I called from all right so once they cut me off I shut up so with that being said I knew these turkeys were kind of uh, what's a good word for it predisposed to pressure I mean they they were reacting to pressure so when you're dealing with a turkey like that less is more um, I digress but the point is is that being here and having the structure and all this was a lot greener I knew that if I just shut it down and was quiet these turkeys would have to come into this next field to find the source of that sound they know exactly where that call was made from to like the absolute I want to say to the yard I mean they're that good with their perception and hearing so that told me what I needed to do in this situation the turkeys ended up popping out and I had this footage and somehow both these hunts were one I had the footage the other one um, I couldn't make a hunt out of it so I think it got lost or something and I should have kept it and if I'd have been thinking I'd have kept it for for times like this but right down here the turkey popped out right there on that corner it was three it was three gobblers and the guy took he missed three times um, now this same field uh, in this situation the turkeys were coming off a roost and they were roosting way back here I'm gonna take you to another situation in the exact same field that was an evening hunt and I'm kind of gonna describe how I went about that hunt uh, and how it played out now this is regarding no decoys just natural you know killing turkeys uh, in this type of setting uh, but what right now I'm gonna go to the other spot that we call I call the turkey across the whole field and they came in here and dad shot one so as you see there's a big rise in this field out here okay um, I'm pretty sure that particular day we had not seen any turkeys I climbed a tree hadn't I hadn't seen any gobblers or anything like that but I knew they had liked to hang out up here in this field up front so what I did is we picked our way all the way around 
and navigated the woods and slipped all the way down, went around the back side of this other field, and we came all the way to back to here, way back in here. So what I did was, me and Dad, I made a point, just like I say, we came, came down, we went way around, we came all the way down the back side of this, and we popped up probably right back in here. So we were probably a solid, I want to say we were a solid, I bet we were about 50 yards into the woods. All right, so from this point of view, his shotgun right here, with this being a lot thicker, okay, um, I was behind them. When I struck the turkeys to check them, they were out there over the hill. But what I did was, <clears throat> is I put, I forced the call and directed it back on the other side of this drop off behind us. And then when I struck them, that's all I really did at that point. Because these turkeys had been pressured too. Um, and you know, I scratched the leaves a little bit, did a little soft stuff when they come over the hill, when they gobbled. And from there, that forced those turkeys they had to come, because this was a lot thicker then, but they had to come up to the edge of that field. And both gobblers actually came out of the field and came in to find us. And that's how dad shot that turkey. I want to say he killed that gobbler. Probably about 30-ish right there. But that was a good hunt. And I'll show the picture of that hunt, because we actually did kill the turkey on that particular one. But there's plenty of these uh, scenarios and stories I could tell, uh, not to bore you all day long, but there's a ton of them like this. And uh, I just thought it'd be a good idea to kind of show you out here actually in the field and uh, just kind of show you a few situations how I set up on flatland field turkeys. Now I'm gonna show you another thing in the exact same field and how that plant panned out, another way I go about hunting uh, flatland field turkeys. So I'm gonna go ahead and spare y'all the boredom of watching me walk all the way over there. But I'll be with you in just a second and we'll go over this, this next scenario. Well, I was calling this flatland field scenarios or <clears throat> strategies, scenarios, whatever you want to call it. But there's a little bit of topography in this field. I have to kind of, let's just call it field turkey scenarios. Um, I did, I killed, I forgot I killed another one right here in the same field. He gobbled over this hill. I crawled out there to right on the, right on this side of that little knoll right there. I called, he gobbled, I shut up, I just sat there, I could hear him spitting and drumming, when I thought he was close enough, I popped up and shot him. Um, it's just the way I grew up doing it, a lot less mess and clutter that I got to deal with these days, toting around this stupid bow, but anyhow, here's a good one too, in the same field. Um, you see I'm walking around I'm walking around this head right here it's kind of a point that sticks out in the field now I climbed a tree way over there big old tree across the field probably 600 yards and I saw a gobbler on the other side of this point so what I did was use the topography looped way around to where I knew that turkey could not see me there again, the foliage and vegetation was a lot thicker uh, this time in the year. And uh, this was probably mid-season, something like that. I'm looking for turkey tracks as I'm doing this. But I set up, it's all growing up a little bit now. The turkey was around the corner. I wanna say it was like two o'clock in the day. I've shot him right off the roost, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, all the way out every hour on the hour the point i'm making is that 
if you're persistent and you stay at it. Um, got enough places you can check, got enough public you can check, private you can check, and you'll stick with it, whether it be glassing, calling, covering ground, finding good sign to set up on. You can kill turkeys on at any time of the day. Uh, you just never know when you're gonna find one, so stick with it. <clears throat> Don't give up just because you didn't hear a bird. Rely on your sign, what the sign's telling you. And don't throw calling and wisdomship and realism in your calling out the window, but just think about that it, it is called turkey hunting, not turkey calling. Although I'm a huge proponent of realism and calling, and it does make a difference. A guy that can sound like a real hen and has woodsmanship is going to kill more turkeys. But anyhow, I digress yet again. I was sitting right by this tree right here. Okay. <clears throat> and if you look, I just came around the point. Okay. The gobbler was on the other side, all this thick stuff. So I directed the call back behind me. Okay. And I also, I called to that turkey, not right here. I called to the turkey about 60 yards back behind me. And then I so slowly, quietly slipped up and set up here. I didn't call again to that turkey. I just let curiosity get the best of him. He worked around that point and came all the way down right here. And I let that turkey get about, I don't know, I let him get way too close. <clears throat> I can tell you that because what happened this particular time is, uh, I keep thinking I see turkeys. What happened this particular time is I shot, and at the time, this was a long time ago, I was shooting uh, I was shooting a shotgun that had like a real tight, I used to shoot a Kix, I still got it, but it was a Kix 665. And I shot at that turkey at like probably 15 yards. I think I was just enjoying the show so much, but I shot and I just kind of scuffed him. It got into him a little bit and then he ran right past me right here. I remember like it was yesterday. He ran right past me and ran up in here and then I picked a shot through there and shot at him again and hit, kind of scuffed him again and then shot again and got into him a little bit better and then I run out of shells. I only had three shots and then I run him down and hit him with my gun. So not too proud of that one but mistakes happen in the woods. Nobody is going to kill every turkey they shoot at if they say or tell you that they've never missed a turkey or not missed many, they probably have not killed many turkeys. Anyhow, hope that was informative for y'all. Figured it's just a lot easier if I take the time and the effort to just explain what I'm talking about in a video uh to y'all out here in the field and show you real life scenarios that happened and how i go about field turkeys